In the Gospel reading today, our Lord tells us that we are to render unto Caesar those things that belong to Caesar. We are to render to God those things that belong to God. Well, Tuesday is voting day in America. The Church teaches us that we have a moral obligation to vote. Now, there are lots of people who've gotten frustrated with things that have happened and they think their vote doesn't count and all these different things. We have to vote. But we have to be very careful with regard to our vote. For instance, the Church teaches us that while we have a moral obligation to vote, we also have to make sure that we do not vote for anyone who is in favor of anything that is intrinsically evil. If you've been watching what has been going on, there is a whole movement that is pushing abortion, which is the number one intrinsic evil. There are people certainly who in their advertising are telling you straight out that they're about abortion, but for the first time that I can ever remember, there are advertisements that aren't necessarily in favor of a particular candidate, but rather that are just simply opposed to someone because they're pro-life. So one of the good things, I guess, about where we're at right now is they're not even trying to hide what they're about. And that's a blessing. But it also is precisely what has brought us to where we are. The United States of America right now is on a precipice. This, I believe, is the single most important election in the history of our nation. It's kind of amazing that it's a midterm election, not a presidential one. But this is going to determine which way things are going to go. And if you listen, both sides are telling us the exact same thing. This is the make it or break it point. The one side is saying, we're going to lose our democracy if we lose. And the other side is saying, we're going to lose our country if we lose. So both of them are telling you exactly where we're at. This is do or die. This is make it or break it. This is one side or the other. But we need to be very clear about what this is. This is not about Republicans and Democrats. This isn't about liberals and conservatives. This is good versus evil, pure and simple. This is good versus evil, and we need to recognize that very, very clearly. It's a question now of where we're going to go and what we're going to choose. Like I said, The big mistake that Satan has made is that he was so convinced that he had everything completely under control that he's exposed himself. He's not even trying to hide his agenda because he thought that he had it made. Well, we'll see. Now, there are lots of people who will say, oh, I'm not going to vote because... Either they think that everything is just a sham, and there's a lot to that. In the state of Minnesota, which is one of the most corrupt states in the United States, there hasn't been an honest election as long as I've been alive, and that's getting pretty old now. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't go out and vote. There are others who think that, well, my vote doesn't make any difference. You know, what difference does it make? To that, I will quote to you an African proverb. If you think that you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping in a tent with a mosquito. Being small can make a big difference. And if you're afraid that there's going to be all kinds of shenanigans and people aren't going to be honest or whatever, Number one, the best way to be able to counter that is to overwhelm it. So the more people that get out there and vote, the more you can break that. Number two, I will point to you what is going on right now in Brazil. 
It's almost a blueprint of what happened a couple of years ago in America, except that yesterday their military took over and ordered the arrest of people on the Supreme Court, for instance, and a whole bunch of other stuff going on because they recognized that this whole thing was a scam. So hope is not lost. But we also need to be very careful about what it is that we're doing and how we proceed. As we know, there are people who are trying to cause division. The great oracle of Seattle, otherwise known as Bill Gates, who has amazing ability to predict the future, a couple of weeks ago came out and said, it's going to be a hung election and then we're going to have a civil war. There is no reason why that needs to happen. It's what they want to happen. But there's no reason that has to happen, and that just means that we just can't give in to their game. They know exactly where things are at, and they know what they're trying to do. But we can't play it. We simply need to rise above it, and we need to do what's right. Again, recognize that this isn't just about politics. So be very careful with your vote, because there are evil people in both parties. And so don't just assume that because, well, this party or I've always voted this way. Do some research. Look at who stands for what. And be very cautious about your vote. If you want to know where things are at, As I said, one side right now is to say, is saying, we're going to lose our democracy. May I remind you that the United States of America was not established as a democracy. This is a republic. So when they say that, what that means is that if we lose this vote, we're going to lose everything that we have been putting in place. The other side is saying, if we lose, we're going to lose our country. Now again, to put that in perspective, there is an attorney from the American Center for Law and Justice who this week said, we have gone immediately to communism without going through socialism. Rather insightful point. So that's where he sees where we're at right now. So again, this is huge. Now putting this into a different context, because again, as I mentioned, this is a spiritual battle. Yes, it's being played out on the natural level, and yes, politics have something to do with it. God will use human beings to be able to do his work. But there are a couple of things to keep in mind here. Number one, as I've told you before, there are only two countries in the history of the world that have been consecrated to God from their inception. One is Israel, and the other is the United States of America. The first act of Congress in union with the President of the United States of America was to consecrate this nation to God. And then the bishops of the Catholic Church consecrated the nation to the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we have a lot in our favor right now in this spiritual battle. And we have to understand, if the vote goes Satan's way, so does the world. This is the last man standing right now. It is the only hope for the world. I believe this will be the beginning of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We will see. But we need to understand. Our Lady appeared to George Washington back in the 1770s. And she showed him that there are going to be three battles 
fought on American soil. One was the Revolutionary War. The second was the Civil War. The third was something about America being attacked on all the shores from different countries all at the same time. Now, I don't know, but I'm wondering if that's exactly where we're at. If we look at the things that are out there and the things that have gone on and what happened, for instance, in the last election that is objectively demonstrable, it's exactly what's going on. It's not a battle with rifles and tanks and boats. It's a spiritual battle. And I remind you too, as I told you back a couple of years ago, when the Navy SEALs were preparing to get the children out from in the tunnels underneath Washington, D.C., particularly under the Capitol building, they came across some things that were very troubling to them. And that didn't mean on the natural level what was happening to the children, obviously, was very troubling. But these are the high, most highly trained people in our country. They're trained to deal with just about anything. And they put out a very panicked plea because they said, well, we have now uncovered. We are not trained to handle, and we don't know what to do with it because this is spiritual. This is good versus evil. This is people worshiping Satan. And we don't know what to do with this because we're not trained. So they were asking people like us to be able to take on that battle for them. They would do what they could on the natural level. We had to do what we could do on the spiritual level. And thanks be to God, it worked. Those children were removed. This is the heinousness that has been going on in our country. It's time that it stops. And it will only stop if people like you and me will get out and vote. And we need to recognize the simple truth. There are about 300 of these people that are sitting out there in Washington, D.C. making decisions, and there are 316 million of the rest of us. It's time that we stand up and make our voices heard. That's what is right in the Constitution. It's the First Amendment. You have the freedom to be able to do this. And it's time that we quit cowering under the threats of these unfortunate souls and stand for the truth. It is about good and evil. And so it's not, like I said, about Republicans and Democrats. It's not about liberals and conservatives, because there are frauds on both sides. And there are very, very, very evil people on both sides that try to present themselves in a good way. Just as St. Paul said, Satan tries to dis disguise himself as an angel of light. Do your research. And if you're not sure about exactly what it is that's going on on the large scale, please look up the World Economic Forum. Look up the Green New Deal. Look up all these various things that are happening so that you know what it is that's happening. Semantics is what these people are all about, playing games with the words to try and confuse us. You've got to learn to see through it. Remember, these are the same people who, when Minneapolis was burning, stood there with the cameras on, with the fires behind them, saying, this is a peaceful protest. It's a bunch of lies. And so when these people speak, you have to be able to look at what's the opposite. Because that's the reality. But we need to stand for the truth. We need to vote with our faith. 
because again, it is about good versus evil. So as I said, do your homework. There are voting guides that Minnesota Citizens Concerned for Life put out. There should be some by all the doors. If you haven't picked one up, please do so. You've still got a couple of days to figure things out if you don't know. But look seriously at this. And remember, it is a serious sin to vote for somebody who is in favor of something which is intrinsically evil because you are voting for the intrinsic evil. So that includes things like abortion and euthanasia and slavery and things like that. This year, they have made abortion the primary point because their boss doesn't want to lose the power that he's got. Their boss is going to get his ugly head squished by a beautiful woman who is our boss. So choose carefully. Choose wisely. And don't think that your vote doesn't count. It is critically important. And even if things get all messed up on the natural level, God knows what you did. Your vote counts with him. And so we're going to trust. And I should remind you, prepare yourself for trouble. No matter who wins. If Satan wins, obviously his whole agenda is going to be evil, so it's going to get really, really bad. If Satan loses, he's not going to be too happy and things are going to get really, really bad. So just be prepared. And pray and trust. Because there is a battle going on far, far bigger than politics. This is about God and Satan. This is about the future of our world, of our nation, certainly. But it's also recognized on every level. This isn't just about who's in Washington. This is about who's going to be in St. Paul. This is about who's going to be in the school boards. This is about who's in the city councils. This is pervasive. So again, it's not just one place. This is, we, we need to take our country back. We need to stand up for what's right. So if you like what's going on and you want more of it, then get out there and vote for those people who are in favor of pushing all this stuff. And if you don't like what's going on and you want it to end, then get out there and vote for the people who want to put things back together and put an end to the evil. Thanks be to God, we have some good, solid, courageous people who are willing to stand for what is right. And they're getting persecuted for it. We need to be behind those people. We need to make our vote, not based on political alliance, but based on our faith, to vote for what is good, what is true, and what is right, to be able to bring sanity back into a world that has lost it completely, to bring the truth into a world that has given itself over to lies, and to ultimately bring goodness back into a world that is filled with evil. That's what this election is really all about. And you and I have a huge, huge say in it. Just like that mosquito in the tent, it's going to make a difference. And if we can get people out there and we can vote, it will make a huge difference. That's what we need to be about. Vote for good, not for evil.